So we'll do about a 20 minute lecture. And then I'll give you half an hour for the quiz. Yeah. Um, there's a sign in sheet going around. Uh, for the online people uh, that are here today, if you want to uh, look at your uh, test while the quiz is uh, being taken by everybody else, you can come up here and grab your test. And we can talk about it after class today, OK? Um, you have a different quiz. It's uh, already online. Okay, so uh, it's uh, been available since about an hour ago, eight this morning, and it'll, I think it'll be available until Wednesday at ten. So okay, that gives you enough time to go ahead and do it. There's two parts. I think the first part. So I think this time you're going to have to set aside because there was some um, concern about the length. about 45 minutes to take the quiz, okay? So that's for the online people. For the in-class people, of course, they'll just have a regular quiz. Um, okay, so uh, the last thing we talked about was uh, figuring out the oxidation uh, numbers for um, various covalent compounds. Uh, now let's uh, look at the
from last time? You guys remember what the observation stick from last time was? What do you think? Zero. Zero. Why is it zero? Do you guys remember? Or do you guys just look at the elemental state, right? So whenever the ever the atoms are in their elemental state, like Cl is in Cl2 or F is in F2 or zinc is in just zinc, um, the oxidation number is zero. Okay, so just like copper here, oxidation number is zero. Okay, so um, which one of these things lost electrons? Zinc going to zinc two plus, or copper two plus going to copper zero? Hopefully you would say zinc going to zinc two plus lost electrons, right? And remember when you lose electrons, you're oxidized, right? So zinc here got oxidized, okay? So if I were to ask you which species was oxidized, you would say, Oxidized was zinc. Right. And then if I asked you which species was reduced, what would you say? Copper. Copper. Okay. Or and you would actually probably want to say Du two plus because that's actually what got reduced. Okay. So since we know that, remember reduced is uh, GER gain electron reduced. Okay. So um, now let's uh, think about the concept of oxidizing, oxidizing agent and reducing agent. So in the redox reaction, the substance that contains the element that gets oxidized during the reaction is called the reducing agent. So the thing that gets oxidized is reducing something else. Okay. So they're both acting on each other here. So since this is getting oxidized, zinc is getting oxidized, we call it the reducing agent, okay? Because it reduces the copper two plus. Okay, so zinc is reducing copper two plus. So even though it's getting oxidized, we call it the reducing agent. Okay. And then since copper two plus got reduced, or it oxidized zinc, right? We call this the oxidizing agent. More often than not, the oxidizing agent will always contain oxygen, okay? In this reaction, it obviously doesn't, but a lot of times it will. <coughs> so the thing that gets reduced is called the oxidizing agent, and the thing that gets oxidized is called the reducing agent. So hopefully now you could uh, go ahead and determine which is the oxidizing agent and which is the reducing agent. Again, a lot of times the oxidizing agent will contain oxygen. Okay. So in this one, uh, and a lot of times the reducing agent is just uh, metal in its uh, elemental state. So you can hopefully just see this already. Okay, and see that water contains oxygen. Sodium is a metal in its elemental state, so it's probably going to be the reducing agent. Water is probably going to be the oxidizing agent because it contains oxygen. And in fact, that's the case. I'll let you go ahead and go through this reaction on your own, and so you can figure out the oxidizing agent and reducing agent for yourself. So let's look at uh, more general types of chemical reactions. So you can, uh, all chemical reactions can be subdivided into essentially two groups, as far as you need to know. Um, redox reactions, which are reactions that we've been going over for the this morning and um, uh, last Friday, and non-redox reactions. Uh, so redox reactions are reactions where the oxidation number of the reactants changes as they go from the reactants to the products, okay? A non-redox reaction is a reaction where the oxidation numbers don't change going from the reactants to the products. So uh, you can uh, uh, then subdivide subdivide non-redox and redox reactions into uh, three separate categories. Two of them 
uh, combination and decomposition reactions are found as both non-redox and redox reactions. Uh, double replacement reactions are always non-redox and single replacement reactions um, are always going to be redox reactions. In fact, this reaction here is a single replacement reaction. Okay? So uh, let's go ahead and look at these different types of reactions. So we're going to learn to identify the following patterns of chemical reactions, combinations, decomposition, single replacement and double replacement. Single replacement you can also call substitution reactions because you substitute one um, part of a substance for another part. Double replacement reactions, these are uh, also called met metathesis reactions. These types of reactions just go ahead and switch partners. So recognizing these various patterns will help you write and understand these reactions. Um, so there's some evidence, uh, visual evidence, of a reaction occurring. You can go over this on your own. Um, this is mostly good for when you're in the laboratory. How do I know if a chemical reaction has taken place? You can see a lot of times bubbles will come off as in the form of gas under a liquid. Um, you'll get uh, light shining off of uh, your chemical um, broth, I guess. And uh, you can also see a change in color a lot of times, or heat is absorbed and produced. OK, so let's talk <coughs> about um, the different types of reactions, starting with combination reactions. So a combination reaction is uh, just what's described here in the general reaction uh, statement. It's the joining of two or more elements or compounds, which produces a product of different compositions. So uh, you can have element A and compound B, and when they stick together, you get compound AB. So an example of a redox combination reaction is this one here. F solid plus O2 gas goes to SO2 gas. Let's look at that in more detail and um, make sure we understand what's actually going on here <coughs> and to say, oh, this is definitely a redox reaction. Oxidation number. 
number of salt circles. Plus four. Okay, plus four. Minus four. Does that equal zero? So, so that's cool, right? So let's look at what the oxidation numbers did. So for sulfur, did it change from products to reactants? Yeah, it did, right? In the products, what is it? Or I'm sorry, in the reactants, what is it? Zero. Job guys, zero, fine. Okay, what about the product? What is it? Plus four. Did that change? Zero different than plus four? Yeah, definitely, right? What about oxygen? What did it like in the reactions? What's its oxidation number? Zero. And what about in the product? Minus two, right? Minus two. Right? So, um, let's look at this. So can we tell that this is a combination reaction, hopefully, right? Because we've got two reactants that kind of stuck together and made one product. Do you guys see that? So that you're kind of combining two things into one thing, okay? And can we see that it's a redox reaction, hopefully? You can see that it's a redox reaction? <coughs> how, did, how, do you, how can you tell it's a redox reaction? Because the oxidation numbers are different from the reactants to the products. Okay? So that's how you know it's a redox reaction. So is this a redox reaction or is this not a redox reaction? It is, right? How did I figure that out? Because of what I just told you, right? The oxidation numbers change from what to what? Not the actual numbers. From where to where did they change? Reactants and products are different, right? So the reactants got a different number than the products, so it's a redox reaction. Thank you. Right? It's a redox reaction. Okay. So what about this other one down here? Is this a redox reaction? Well, it says it's not. How would you be able to figure that out? How would you be able to figure if this is a redox reaction or not? Do the same thing as you did here. Let's do another one. Let's do this one here and prove to ourselves that it's not a redox reaction. Okay, so let's do it on the products. Whoops. 
Okay, so oxygen here is what? What's the oxidation state of oxygen here? Negative two. Negative two, always, right? Negative two times two. Remember the whole thing has to equal what? Zero. numbers of each one of the components of the reaction and asking yourself, did they change, did they not? If they changed, then it's a redox reaction. If they didn't, then it's a non-redox reaction. And you can tell, is it a combination reaction? Well, yeah, because two things went to one thing. Okay? Uh-huh. Does that have to do with the coefficient? No, so this coefficient here, this is just telling you that you've got two of these. So just that one guy will tell you what his redox stuff is. If you wanted to, you could multiply this side and this side by 2. But when you do that, 0 times 2 is 0, and 0 times 2 is 0. Right? So that's that coefficient, that doesn't um, contribute to any of the calculations for the redox um, numbers of the particular <coughs> molecules that you're interested in. Okay. Um, let's look at... So here's, again, the combination reaction. You can see, again, this is a redox combination reaction. I'd like you to just try to figure that out on your own. Hopefully, some of you can already see that it is. And what the redox change is for those various compounds in the reaction. The last thing I'd like to talk about um, today before the quiz is decomposition reactions. So decomposition reactions are just the opposite of combination reactions, <coughs> where you've got a compound, AB, that breaks apart, okay, not necessarily in half, but it'll break apart to form two different things, okay, A and B. Um, AB is always going to be a compound, of course. A plus B can be either compounds or elements. Um, so it's the reverse of a combination reaction. You produce two or more products from a single reaction. And you can have redox decomposition reactions, like the one here, HI, 2HI gas goes to H2 gas plus I2 gas, or a non-redox decomposition reaction like we have here. HCO3 aqueous goes to H2O liquid plus CO2 and there you can see, well, here's peroxide for you, but I'll, probably, I'll never make you uh, figure out um, oxidation states for peroxides in this class, because they're kind of weird. So you can see here, this is a decomposition reaction. This is the reaction that occurs when um, you pour hydrogen peroxide on like a cup. Um, so single replacement and double replacement reactions we'll go over next time. Um, so if you guys could close.